Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to be going over another book today. This one's going to be on t t Total Recall, The Unbelievably True Story of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, this is a fascinating book, really. You know, this is probably one one of the most um, exciting books I've ever read, and it's and it's like taught me a lot, basically. Um, I'm just I, I'm just going to go over a bit um, about um, what I got from this book. As you guys can see, it's a really it, it's a really big big though book, really. But um, I don't think you have to read all of it. I just think, you know, if you guys just like to skim, skim the, through the book and stuff and read the most important parts, and I'll provide some of the stuff I got from this book. Before I go on, you know, um, I, I want to actually talk a little, a little bit about, uh, about Arnold Schwarzenegger. For those who don't know who he is, most people know who he is or, or at least should know who he is, you know. Um, he won Mr. Olympia seven times. Um, he's in. He's an Austrian American. He came to uh, to the U.S. Um, I believe he he wrote in his autobiography by himself. You know, at the age of though eighteen, you know, wanting to um, um, start um, start a new life. You know, um, I mean, not wanting to like start a new life, but like wanting to like go um, start fresh and stuff. You know, um, it talks about how though. He talks about how he was um, he was born in um, 1947 in in Austria during World War II um, at a time when uh, um, no sorry d d um, yeah d d during World War II at, at a time when the Allied um, Allied forces that means um, the you know, U.S. Um, U.K. and France defeated um, Hitler's Third Reich so. So, like, you guys could um, imagine it, right? It was a time, basically, when the world also instilled, I think, um, that same year, the you know, um, Universal De De Declaration of, of um, Human Rights. Um, and if you guys go to the website, actually, it talks about how how the um, Universal Declaration of the Human Rights tried to unify a world which was um, separated by the West and the East at that time, right? Um, and that's not true, actually, though, because if, if you actually look at it, right, what about Africa, you know? Africa really um, had absolutely nothing to do with the with the Second World World War, you know, and stuff. But but anyways, um, so um, if you guys go um, through his book, basically, right, he talks about a lot about um, how, he, how he grew up in Austria, right? Um, and he gives you the analogy, for instance, of that um, when he used to eat, you know, breakfast, right? How his how his old father said he couldn't eat um, eat or breakfast until he uh, until he trained. And so, at, at like a young age, he got this um, he got this notion that you know um, I have to I have to train or I have to earn my, my right towards a towards a breakfast, right? Think about how you know different that is to um uh, nowadays how the how the like children and how and our kids are just all uh, um given stuff without being asked um or, or or without earning you know earning the right to have to have breakfast earning the right to have lunch you know um and so is and so his father instilled a lot of those you know um um early you know important ha habits basically which 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 then of course Arnold you know carried throughout his life you know um, Arnold Schwarzenegger also like talks about how his father was a was a was a police officer um, within his town and um, and how his father actually thought that though he would never do anything big in his life but um at the end of the book you guys will though like to read you know that um, to also, um, um, he also writes that, you know, to like, n to like never blame your parents for anything that though, um, that though like happened in your life, you know, um, it, it, it's really important to understand that, you know, whatever your parents did, they did it to the best, um, and to their maximum cap capability, um, and I think my, my parents for everything they've, they've though like though they had done for me, you know, and accomplished for me. But um, now it's still like my turn to actually um, live live the, the life I choose to live. Remember, Buddha says, you know, no one um, but no one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves 
must walk the path. In that same sense, um, um, as soon as you turn over, over though, like 18, right, and you live in a free democratic nation, right, um, your life is in your hands, period. And so it's, and so it's really important to understand that, you know, and um, Arnold Schwarzenegger knew that, you know. Now, um, as, um, as I stated, right, he won um, Mr. Olympia seven times. He became the 38th governor of, of um, California for two terms. Eh? Imagine that, two terms from 03 till um, 2011. That's about eight years. That's a wonderful um, thing, you know. Amazing how, um, how an actor who didn't know English, I mean, sorry, who didn't know English properly, migrates to the U.S., right? Becomes Mr. Olympia seven times. Then he wants to um, go um, into uh, into Hollywood, but then they re um, reject him because of his accent and because of his name, right? But then he learns, wait, I just have to, you know, f practice reps and sets, you know? Those were ones of the Arnold's rules, you know? He knew, um, he said that, though, he understood the importance in life of of though and everything in life basically everything um, practice in life has to be reps and sets so um if you guys read his book basically he'll talk about how he um how he actually wrote down all of his goals basically um and, and he states that he that um that he had the conviction that though there were no shortcuts um um you have to have the conviction in life that you know there are no shortcuts to your goal so like whatever you're going to set for yourself ho however you though choose to like live your life it's important to understand that to uh, actually accomplish those th those goals and know that you know there is no way back at all you know you only move them um, you're only moving forward um and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Arnold Schwarzenegger knew that you know um and then yeah, and then so he um he learns English, you know, um he gets to like the star in a film, um he stars in like multiple films, I believe as well he, he became the highest the highest paid actor, um and of course you know one of his most famous film films films Terminator, on the back of his book you know he has it over here, um and and that sold a lot of money right, and then of course um after after Hollywood. He, uh, he he decided to like run for the um, as a re Republican governor of California, and he achieved that. And as I said, you know, two two um two terms for eight years. You know, another wonderful thing about him is that he also served a year in the Australian Armed Forces. So when you're talking about a guy who had you know skin in the game, you know, this guy knew everything. You know. He um he knew that um that um in life is not what you say but like though but like what you do you know and he's and he's achieved a lot of stuff in life you know now um I'm not gonna go over the entire book of course with you guys today and stuff you know for those who actually like the book please you know buy the book I promise you it's a it is a fascinating story um but I'm just I'm just gonna go over some of the points which I took um. From 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 the book, and which I've put to the practical use in my life, and maybe you can also benefit from it. So, um, the first thing I took from it is that if you guys read read the story, right? He he talks about how one time he was um he was acting, right? Um, and in and in one of his acting roles, basically, um, he had um um there was like a, a bunch of beautiful ladies and stuff, you know, but they. But they weren't serious, you know. They were they were like the messing around, playing around, right? And then and then there was this one lady, right? Which though he actually um, found really you know interesting, you know, in the sense that um she wasn't all that all all all, all that beautiful. He states, but he states she was though serious when it came when it came to acting, you know. She was um she was though serious about her role, and she was a good actor because she because she was serious. And at the end they. Then they ended up choosing her instead of the other beautiful girls, right? And she, and though, um, Arnold states that 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 it's important in life, basically, that if you're going to commit to something, you have to be serious about it. And of course, that comes with um, um, the um, certitude that way. This is what I want, and this is what I'm I'm going to do, and this is what I'm going to achieve. You know, another um, interesting story actually um, that though like relates to this story is. Um, 
Ray Kroc's book. Um, if you guys have the like the Red Ray Kroc, he was the founder of the McDonald's franchise. Grinding it out was his book, and in his book he wrote how how um um when he went to um acquire the the um franchise rights to um to McDonald's from the from the McDonald's brothers, right, Dick and, and uh, Maurice Mc, McDonald's. He um he wrote in his book how he actually looked them in the eye, and he and he was in a state of certitude when he asked them, you know, um, can I can I buy the franchise um rights to to McDonald's? And he said, you know, that made all 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 the difference. He was convinced. He was um certain that um that the McDonald's brothers would um they'll hand him the rights to the McDonald's franchise. Um, and then, of course, at the end, he did, you know, um, um, buy the franchise with the help of um, some, you know, some, you know, borrowed money, and then grew it into um, one of the largest franchises in the world. You know, McDonald's has what fifteen thousand franchises around the world, fifteen thousand plus, um, etc. So, so like the U.S. and C, right? That a state of certitude is a must in life. You know, if you guys are going to achieve anything, you know, and I think. I've also took that to like to my life for serious. You know, I know in my life that um, in order for me to, to achieve a, any goal in my life, I, I must first be certain, and I must be convinced, and, and, and I must be serious of what I'm doing, Macy. Now, um, s some other um, some other uh, of the Arnold's rules. So, um, where I got all those rules, by the way, is that it's is that it's. The last chapter of, of, of the book, he st um, he states his rules, right? So, like the, um, some of the rules, is he says, you know, turn your turn your liabilities into assets. So, um, I take that as well. Um, one of my liabilities, of course, um, is um, is basically um, training in the gym, in the sense that I have like a like a back problem, right? But I don't like, to, but I don't let that impede me and to actually train in the gym properly, right? So I've so so I've learned how to um, work all my muscles, including my including my though yeah, including my though back, without hurting my back, you know. Um, and I do um sp um sp specialized um training for that, you know. Um, simply, you know, um, I've done a lot of a lot of research on it, you know. It's important, of course, to also do research. You know, you don't want to um, hurt your body and stuff. You know, do like their research first. But once you have research, you know, then it's just you know um, working. You know, and seeing you know ex experimenting and, and and seeing which 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 the way suits um, suits better for you, basically. So um, the you know, um, second rule of his I, I, I got is um, when someone says no, hear yes. I think that's a really important one, you know, because, of course, you know, anyone's going to say no, you know, no, you know, as what, you know, as what Daniel Kahneman says, right, people create noise in life, you know, they they have their opinions, they have their own sayings, they have their own um, thoughts and stuff, so what, so when someone tells you no, you want to hear yes, and that's it. Um, third one, um, don't follow the crowd, go, go where it's empty, he says. Um, this is, you know, following as well a lot of the entrepreneurs. Sam Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart, said, you know, um, swim sw swim upstream. So when everyone is going downstream, you you want to swim upstream. Um, Mark Mark Cuban, as well, the founder of um, sorry, the owner of the uh, of of the Dallas Mavericks NBA team, said, you know, um, if there's a, a, a hundred people doing something. You don't want to be the 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 hundredth and one person doing the, doing that same stuff, you know. There is always a, a way out of it, um, where though like you can be the first person doing doing something else. And so Mark Cuban says um says um says the same, you know. When everyone goes this way, I go that way. I think that's a really um useful useful rule. Now, of course, number um. Four, which I got from his rules is that no matter what you do in life, selling is part of it. So, as we know, um, selling um, consists of everything in life, people, everything. Not only um, selling products, right, but um, 
um, when you talk with your spouse or in, or if you're a um, adult basically and you have a child and you um and you ask your child to um to the make to the make their bed right what are you actually doing you're actually selling them the idea for them to go make their bed and then of course the you know, like child buys into that that door idea that that yes I will go make make the bed right so selling consists of everything in life people everything and and it's really important to know that I think it's um the Wolf of Wall Street Jordan Belfort said um you're either selling and persuading your life or you're failing simple as that you know um, you have to know how to sell now of course number um, five um Arnold said you know don't overthink you know I think that's a really important um, thing in life you know um we tend to be way too much informed you know too much noise basically and then if you overthink about something or if you get into what Ray Dalio calls this though like the detail ex anxiety where you like where you like want to micromanage everything you know think about everything before you go on to make your choice you know um you are probably um cons consuming too much energy in your brain and um, and you will probably not get the most things out of it, right? So it's important sometimes to, to like ch just trust trust your um, intuition. Now, with that, uh, I will say um, as what uh, Daniel Kahneman said, right? Subjective intuition is not a good um, thing to actually trust. So um, so um, Daniel Kahneman calls it um, um, discipline intuition. Read, um, read more into that. I won't go into that, but he has a way of the of the how you can make bit, bit better in, intuitive thoughts um, via discipline intuition. Now, um, another rule is um, Arnold said, you know, never let pride get in your way. So of course, you know, um, we always try to get, you know, we always try to get um, emotional. Um, and we get too happy, too proud of ourselves and what we though accomplish that we though forget who we are and we forget our though future responsibilities. Remember, George George Bernard Shaw said, you know, um, we are made wise not by the recollections of our past, but but by the responsibilities of our future. Right. So so like to never get overly proud, um, proud of yourself, you know, because understand that. You still have to live in the present moment, and you have to accomplish what you want in in the future. And, and to sometimes let that pride go and just move forward, basically. Um, now, of course, a, a, another one that he says is that um, is that the day has twenty four hours, and this is a really important one. You know, this um this was um, matters to me a lot, basically, because um, I've really tried to um set you know priorities and set. And they'll um, formulate my day in a certain way where where I don't waste time and where I'm the most efficient, you know. Um, and so he talks about in his in his book basically how like the one time when he was the governor of California, he, he went to a Californian school, and in the school there was a kid yelling at him and says, you know, um, says you know, um, um, I don't have any, um, I don't have time, you know, because I have to study. Um, um, full time, you know, and and then my grades, um, and then I have to worry about this and that and that, um, and then you know what Arnold said? Wait, wait a minute. Um, you have to study. Okay, that's about three hours, right? Then after that, um, um, you have to do, you, you have to do your homework, right? Okay, that's another five, um, t two hours, right? And then he says, you know what? And 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 you don't work either and stuff, and you want for the um for the um for the um California State to be paying you um, for um, you know uh, un um, unemployment benefits, and he's like you know sh sh surely you know um, because for the rest of your time all, all you're doing is only is only partying, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? But he says you know um, that the 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 day has 24 hours, so um, in that time you know you can do a lot in that time, you know, and you know Arnold Schwarzenegger. Gives though his example when he says, you know, wait, when I was going through my through my university, I managed to um um do my university homework, study for my exams, 
um, go to acting class, um, go to the gym, you know, and do some other recreational um, things afterwards. And, and though he's like, you know, if I can do it, so can you. And so I have that in, in my mind, right? I'm like, wait, if the day has the next 24 hours, and, and even if I work eight hours, you know, a, a day, it doesn't matter, you know, still you should have time for the, for the gym, for your um, for your own life, you know, for your um, recreation, you know, going out, whatever, you know, still you should have time for all that. Remember, there's always time for everything, basically, you know, if you if you don't like um, manage it properly. So I think that's a really important lesson, especially in this world where I have a sense, you know, that I talk to like some of my friends, and they always tell me, you know, I don't have enough time and stuff, or um, or um, though. I need more time, they say, you know, as if, you know, um, someone on this planet gets more than those 24 hours and then no one on this planet, we all have the same amount of time. So ask yourself this question as well. If, if the like, the, we all have 24 hours a, a, a day, right? Why do some people accomplish more than other people, right? Simply, simply because those people who who do a, a, a accomplish more than other people set set the right priorities, and, and they do what's most important first, um, and then they go down their list, basically, you know, and that's what it's about. So, and um, and then there were two more rules. So one of them is um, take care of, of your body, but also of, of your mind, right? Arnold gives this um, uh, analogy that he said, you know, um, I um, I understood from the from the Greeks, right, who um in, who invented the Olympics, right? But they also had wonderful thinkers such as you know Plato, Socrates, etc. And and so he said, you know, um, you have to take care of both of your body, but also of, of your mind. So he gave the you know, analogy where though. He though imagined himself as a sponge, you know, absorbing all the um, knowledge and information, basically. And he said, you know, the world became my university. So he had this, you know, Sherlock Holmes sleuthing curiosity, basically, you know, wanting to know new stuff. And so I take that as well in in, in my life. I'm constantly on the um, Wikipedia or on you know Google search, you know, looking up new terms and looking up new. Um, New though I ideas, looking up new um, movements, being being informed of the current affairs, whether it's on the whether it's on the news, um, looking up you know what the people are are also thinking about and stuff. And the more you know, you know, I believe the more happy you are, you know, because then you are have this um, knowledge basement, you know. So and I also read a lot of a lot of books, you know. So um, so that's all. So it all helps like that. Um, and then, of course, lastly, um, which I think is a tremendously important one, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger says, you know, to um, stay hungry, he says, you know. Um, and, and I think it's really important, right, because he because he puts the you know, a, a, analogy how, though, he knows so many friends who have, who have though, achieved a lot in their life. And after they achieve a, a lot, you know, um, then they just stop, you know, um, wanting to actually grow, stop wanting to thrive, stop wanting to um, achieve more, right? Um, and that's a and that's a real problem, I think. You know, same as what Arnold thinks. You know, he says he says that you know you, you, you always want to stay hungry. You know, I believe that because I, I believe like like what Anthony Robbins says. You know, nothing you achieve in life will ever make you happy. In the sense that you know, um, it doesn't matter how many friends you have. How much, how much money you make, you know, those are all wonderful things, right? But he says, you know, Anthony Robbins says that, you know, progress will make you happy. You know, progress equals happiness, you know. If you can get up every single day and they'll achieve more and they'll, like, they'll feel more and, and always stay hungry, you know, and, and always want to do more and always want to help out more people, want to, you know, donate more, like, the, like the money to, like, the ch to like ch charity, etc. You know, um, you will um, you will you will feel happy because of that. You know, so I get that as um I always take that as um as a really important thing, right? Um, um, I I I remember a quote from um 
Abraham Maslow. Um, he, he said, you know, um, you either step forward into growth or you will step back into into safety. So, um, so I use that as as an a, an analogy of my life to always step forward because I, I always want to grow and raise my standards. Basically, that's what life is. Uh, life is about. I think you know, raising who you are as a as a person, basically, you know, not only you, basically, you know, but also helping out more, more though, more though, people donating more um, uh, money to um, wonderful causes, etc. That's what life is about. So, um, I'll end it there, and I'll say that um, that yeah, that that it's a fascinating book. This book, I hope um, whoever's on this call, you know, can also buy the book and stuff. Um, and if you have any comments at all, or if you have any questions, you know, write it down here below, please, and I'll be happy to answer it. And I'll see you guys on my next book review.